Welcome to edupediaworld.com. In today's video, we will study about sound. In the present video, we will talk about sound. How is sound produced? What are the sources of sound? And what are the various medium in which sound can travel or sound can propagate? So what do you think is sound? I think most of you will say that whatever we keep hearing on, in our daily life, in every day, every moment is all sound. Yes, well that is true. And the right answer is whether it is any kind of musical instrument that we hear, that we enjoy hearing or let's say it is drums or it is guitar, it is flute, it is sitar, all these are sounds to our ears. So even if a baby, let's say, is crying or he is laughing, he is producing a different kind of sound. If any individual is giving some kind of speech, that he is again producing a different kind of sound. Whenever we talk to each other in groups, those are also sounds. You must have seen the school bells ringing, you know. So the spherical ball in between this uh, bell, it strikes on one side and then to the other side. So that also produces a different kind of sound. The train or the motorbikes or the bus, the scooter, each of these uh, things produce different kind of sound. Even if when, when I'm speaking to, why is that you're able to hear me? That is because I'm producing sound. So each of these things produce sound differently. There is different mechanism. So in this video, we will study about how sound is produced. So uh, now you must have seen that all these sounds that I have just discussed, each of them are very different from each other. Some of the sounds are very high, so we are able to hear them very, very clearly. Other sounds are actually very, very low because we don't hear them very easily. They are very, very, uh, the frequency is very low, so we don't hear them uh, so clearly. So each of these sounds are different. So why is it so that these sounds are different from each other. There has to be some reason. Otherwise, all the sounds would have been just the same and we would hear them in the same way as we hear um, all these sounds. Why is, why is that the sound produced by musical instrument is different from a sound produced when a train blows the horn? Or the sound produced by musical instrument is different from the sound that uh, when we talk to each other, that sound. Why is that the sounds are different? So primarily, sound is produced by what we call as vibration. Whenever there is vibration, the sounds it produced. And in vibration, we talk about two things. One is the amount of vibration. Another is the speed of vibration. So if the speed of vibration is fast, then a different kind of sound is produced. If the speed of vibration is slow, then a different kind of sound is produced. So what is this vibration? Vibration is a rapid to and fro movement. So when I say what is uh, what when I say to and fro, what is to and fro movement? So I have just considered. Let's consider that I have a ball here, and this spherical ball is connected to this thread, and here the thread is again tied to a particular point, and I leave this ball down, which is hanging by this thread. If I take the ball to one side and just leave it, the ball automatically on its own goes from one side to the center position and then from the center position to the other side, to the left side. So it goes to and fro. So this movement is called as to and fro movement. So when I say a, a something is vibrating means it is going to and fro, to and fro, to and fro like this. So let's consider that we are what I have shown here is a sitar. Sitar, as you have, must have seen sitars or you can take guitars also. These instruments have got a lot of strings in it. And now what you do is when you pull a particular string, the string starts vibrating and it vibrates again in, a, in that true to and fro motion. And it vibrates, it produces sound. So we can say that sound is nothing but vibration. What kind of vibration? It is a true to and fro vibration, right? So let us uh, uh, now uh, take a case of guitar. 
the guitar the example of guitar is also the same it has also got a uh, similar kind of uh, strings and when we pull each of these strings again they they vibrate and because they vibrate the entire instrument is vibrating and that's how the sound is produced so sound that we hear are nothing but oscillatory sound waves where the amplitude goes high and low like what is shown here so this you see the amplitude is high and low high and low so these are called as waves so the vibrations that i talk is nothing but this high and low you know waves so sound is nothing but oscillatory oscillatory sound waves that we hear so in case of like as i discussed guitar and sitar these strings vibrate and in the form of these uh, something like oscillations and these oscillations are then heard by our ears so these are the two a very very perfect example what happens is when you pull the string the string vibrates if this vibrates then molecules will vibrate and each of these molecule will again uh, vibrate the adjacent molecules and that's how the entire uh, instrument is vibrating and that's how the sound is produced so different objects will produce different kind of vibrations for example as you see here when we speak we produce vibrations they are different kind of vibrations when the school bell is ringing as i just discussed what happens is a spherical ball here it goes to and fro motion so it is vibrating so we are able to see how it is vibrating so these are large vibrations these are the amplifier again the vibrations but there are some vibrations which are very very feeble they are very less in intensity which we are not able to see for example if you take a rubber band and you just pull that rubber band in between the fingers and just pull the rubber band so what happens is a rubber band will start vibrating but these the, the sound that is produced by this rubber band will be very very less as compared to the sound that is produced by using when you hear any school bell ringing that is because the lesser the vibration produced the lesser will be the sound produced right so it depends upon the amount of vibration so that is why i said two things are very important first is the amount of vibration and the speed of vibration these two things will decide as to how much of the sound is produced so uh, these are few examples uh, of how the sound is produced how different sounds are produced now when the vibrations are produced then these vibrations reach our ear and we are able to hear the sound now let us uh, discuss the source of vibration there are many sources of sound um for example we have the vibrating diaphragm of a stereo speaker this produces vibrations so when the speaker is on it produces a lot of vibrations and these vibration reach our ear and that is how we are able to hear these sounds so sources of sound can be anything which produces vibration those become the sources of sound so now let us talk about medium of sound does sound require any medium to travel can it travel in vacuum yes sound definitely requires a medium to travel without a medium it cannot travel and we will not be able to hear anything so to travel for the sound to travel it requires three medium air water and land that is it can travel on air on water and over land also that means that the sound we will be able to hear through gases in liquids and also through solids so we will be able to hear sound in all the three mediums but now and why is that so why are we able to hear that we will explain later but also the speed of the sound will depend upon the medium through which it is traveling for example sound will always travel faster in solids and thereafter a slightly slower in case of liquids and sound will travel the slowest through gases now why is it so so and now we know that in vacuum it cannot travel if there is vacuum there is no gas there no liquid no solid it is only vacuum we will not be able to hear sound it requires all these three mediums now why is that so that uh, the sound will be able to travel faster in solids a uh, slightly slow 
in liquids and slowest in uh, gases why is it so see i have an example here we have three uh, people standing uh, at one end and let's say this blue material here this is a solid material you can say anything wood you can take iron or anything and the second one as i see here is uh, this is the liquid you can take any liquid you can take water or any liquid and the third one is a gas so it is a uh, you can say a hollow uh, tube or a hollow material but it has gas inside this now what happens is these three people standing here they make some kind of uh, sound uh, standing at one end of the object now what happens is you see in this picture what happens as far as the solids are concerned the sound will travel faster it reaches faster liquids are slightly slower than solids and gases it will be even more slow so why is it slow? you must have seen and you must be knowing it that in solids you must have seen the molecules the molecules are very very tightly packed with each other they are very very close and adjacent to each other whereas in liquids you see the molecules are not as compact and are not as tightly packed as they are in the case of solids they are slightly away from each other whereas in the gases they are freely moving in any of the directions and the see the spaces between uh, two molecules is also quite large so that is exactly the reason that let's say if this molecule is vibrating the first molecule is vibrating in case of solid it will not take any time and immediately the adjacent molecule will start vibrating again the next molecule will start vibrating even in this direction also and even in this in both the direction each these molecules are because they are tightly packed so the vibration that one molecule will cause on to the other molecule is much faster and that is why the sound will travel much faster in case of solids whereas in liquids because these molecules are not as tightly packed so for one molecule to make the other molecule vibrate it will take slightly more time as compared to in case of solids whereas in the in the in the case of the gases you see here the gases the molecules are even uh, far from each other so even the gases will take even more time for sound for the sound to travel through them so that is exactly the reason why i say that in case of solids the sound will travel faster the um, one fact is that the sound can travel four times faster and farther than in the case of air and that is uh, also there is one more thing why you must have uh, heard that you know whales communicate very fast in case of water that is because in case of liquids the communication will be faster because the sound travel faster that is why we say that whales generally communicate faster in water that is exactly the reason also apart from the medium in which the sound is traveling there is one more factor on which the propagation of sound depends that is the temperature so medium and temperature are two things on which the sound depends in if in case uh, there is you know a certain day which is hotter then in that particular day the sound will travel faster even through solids or it is through gases or it is through liquids in any of the three mediums the sound generally travel faster because the day is warmer and why is that so because on a warm day the molecules are actually they are bumping they are they are more bumpy as compared to on a on a cold day so that is the reason that the sound will travel faster so two factors now we know on which sound propagation of the sound depends is medium and temperature with solids it will travel faster in gases the slowest if the temperature is cold then the propagation of the sound will be slow whereas if the if the day is hot then the sound will travel faster so in this video after going through the video you will be able to understand you will be able to judge as to what is sound how the a sound is produced how does it reach our ear how do we hear the sound various mediums of propagation of sound and what are the factors that affect the propagation of the sound 
you will also be able to distinguish between different kinds of sound so thanks for watching edupedia world